Welcome everyone. Welcome to a Mega Life 21 Progressive Podcast. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And uh, I am here with my special guest for the second time, part two, uh, the one and only uh, performing artist, Ken Create. Uh, when he was on the uh, Progressive Podcast for the first time. Uh, he was the writer can create, and we talked about writing uh, and um, writing skills. Now, this time, being that can create is a man that wears different hats, this time you're, you are going to hear the performing artist can create discuss creativity and how he puts together his performances based on the music he's using, how he studies the song, how he takes it apart, how he analyzes it, and decides what exactly he's going to do with the song in terms of his entertainment, in terms of his approach. Um, Mr. Ken Create, thank you for joining us for uh, this no part problem. for part two. Okay, uh, you're coming over loud and clear, digital perfection. We are live via livestream.com at the um, Mega Life 21 live stream channel. Okay, we're live on the internet, uh, also mobile, people who have smartphones, um, as well as being recorded. Now, when you first started um, your attempt at creativity, can create. Uh, it was back in the uh, the early or mid 1980s. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. But I gotta go back a little further and give a background. Okay, go ahead. Of myself. Well, I was brought up in a middle class family. I was into sports, played a lot of sports, played on all the teams, and then uh, got older with my friends. The drugs came around, the alcohol came around, and we partied. But we were rockers, rock and rollers. And uh, my oldest brother, he was the one that was into Motown and funky music and dance music. But he shared a big room with me and my other brother. So we used to, you know, listen to the music because it was like in our face. And there was some music that we did like. A lot of it we didn't because we were rock and rollers. Well, as time went by, uh, my one friend said to me one night, he goes, you want to go to a dance club? And I was like, well, you know, I was through that already. And it wasn't really a good experience because I didn't have a dance and these people were having a good time. But anyway, I said, yeah, let's go. Uh, we got all new clothes and stuff. We went to a dance club. Uh, and it just turned out we went to a Spanish club in the city. And me and my friend were like <laughs> drugged up. All right? And we were having a good time. We're partying with all the Spanish people. And then all of a sudden there was this big circle. And uh, people were getting in the circle, dancing, jumping out. And for some strange reason, I got in that circle. And I was all by myself and had to be at least 200 people watching me. I had no idea what I was doing. Okay. And when I was done, people were like, man, I give you a lot of credit for doing that. I said, hey, look, I don't have to dance, but I'm having a good time. And they said, well, that's what it's all about. Okay. Now, that was the first time I ever did something in public. All right. Didn't know what I was doing but it was in front of 200 people. So I think right there, I was meant to be a performer, all right? So anyway, as time went by, I started going to dance clubs, and I would go and have a good time, but it was like to relieve stress problems in your life. So I take it to the dance floor. Then one night, I went out to a club, and I actually started to move. And I was like, well, I'm dancing. <laughs> I had no idea where this came from, but I started to dance. So 
So I got the bug. And then when people were coming up to me, they said to me, wow, you're a pretty good dancer. And I used to look at them and say, wow. They're like, yeah. That's all I'm saying. You know, I thank God for it. So that's what opened me up in a way, searching for the truth. And then I would walk around in my neighborhood and ask God all kinds of questions. Why is this going on? Why? really had no answers. But my one friend, I knew he was different. His name is Rocco. He's a famous magician. But back then, he was just starting out, and he was a Christian. Yeah, Rocco Solano. So, yeah, he's he right. could be he could be seen on the web. Right. So one time we're hanging out by the bridge, and he said, "I heard about what you're doing." And I was like, "Yeah, you know, I'm not bad, you know." And he says, "Well, I'm doing the show down, bringing Dean Castle. You do mine." I was like, what are you talking about? So he showed me a couple moves with the robot. And I was like, whoa, that's really cool. I like that. He goes, come up to my place. I'll show you some stuff. I said, okay. So he showed me a couple moves. And he says, well, you pick up quick. You want to come down and bring in the council with me? So I said, okay. So I went down there with him. And uh, first time I ever did mine, I had a white face and tuxedo. I had no idea what I was doing, but I pulled it off. In fact, two kids said to me, you're good. And I was like, good. They were like, yeah, my brother does that. He goes, you're better than my brother. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah. He goes, how long have you been doing this? I said, <laughs> I just started. They're like, come on. And I said, yeah. But well, you see, I, I was in the rhythm already of dance, meaning I was going somewhere because I could move now. So I did a little cover-ups, and I got away with it. Then after that, when we came back, he brought me to church, and I accepted Christ as my Savior, and I started reading the Bible, and I went to the dance clubs, I get on the floor, and everything just started to click pretty good, but then I had people question to me, if you're a Christian, why do you go to dance clubs? Okay. So now, when I would go, I would see things that would attract me, the lights, steps. Because I watched the Friday Scare movies, Gene Kelly movies, because now I got the bug. Yeah, Nicholas Brothers. Right. So now, I was like, <clears throat> if this is wrong, me being here, then I'm seeing something that's different. So I started concentrating on the steps, the lights, circles, boxes, and I was going more into creativity. Okay, forget about the music, but concentrating on what's in front of me, these props. Yeah. So well, people that are somewhat inactive, lazy, and they sit on their ass, they don't understand the dance club environment with the, with the, with right. the music and the DJ and the lights and all that. They, they wouldn't understand that. And, uh, right. So it's yeah. like I went somewhere different. Right. Okay. So now when I had people coming up to me and talk to me, I would witness to that. All right. So now through the years that have passed, I'm still going to clubs, but now it's gone to another level. Now, when I started to put acts together, I met this one guy who was a comedian and uh, I had some props in my friend Rocco. And he says, he, he, we went to a club and he loved what I did. Okay. And he said, how'd you like to open up for me? I got a show in about a month. I think you could put something together. So I had a dancing cane. I had uh, where I could do the mime. And I was doing something else. I said, yeah, I could put three songs together. He goes, okay. So I started working with him. So that all went down. And then uh, later on, my friend Rocco invented these lights. to call them the lights. So I started working with the lights. Yeah, they're yeah. The dance clubs LEDs with yeah. these lights, and just let the Holy Spirit take over these lights. It was just like amazing. So now I looked at, I had a purpose. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? What am I doing here? Okay, and my purpose was to reach these people in my peers of my age bracket. So when I was done, you know. People come up to me and talk to me, and I would witness to them. Because the Bible says, I will give you the desire of my heart. 
okay? So my desire was to reach people through the entertainment. So God started using me as a tool to reach people. And then as things evolved, and I got into the dancing cane, then I got into masks and the lights. Now it's floating balls. It's all different props. But now the way things are put together to go into my act is I listen to music. And if I like something, I'm saying, oh, there might be something there. Okay, but I don't know. A week later, I might go back to that music and listen to something that called my, you know, ear. So I'll listen to it and say, could be, but I'll put it to the side. Maybe two weeks later, hey, let me throw that CD on. I throw it on and it's like, whoa, there's something here. So now what I do is I look in my drawers and see what kind of prop that would go with that music. But I don't practice. I put my headphones on. I listen to the music where I know that music inside and out, okay. every beat, every change, okay? And then once I know that song inside and out and every beat, now I take the prop and I start working to the prop to the song and it kicks. So if it's robot, I'll go into robot. But if the music changes and it's telling me, you gotta spin right here, then I go into spin. But if it goes, I'm back into robot. I'm back into robot. Now, if it changes dance, I go into dance. Okay? So, it changes. I like changes because when you do changes, I'm changing the moves. Okay? And that's just the Holy Spirit power. And that's how we put things together. And that's how he works through me, creating through me. Now, I started out in 1982. And now it's 2015. Mm -hmm. so we're all through them years where I first started out now where God has brought me and all the shows I have under my belt doing nursing homes doing churches, doing theaters doing events going to the dance clubs so you know what, even though I'm not where I want to be I know in my lifetime and being on TV four or five times and being on VH1 I know in my lifetime of all the clubs, all the events, being on TV, there had to be at least, at least, all the people that see me all through them years has to come to about a quarter of a million people that have watched me in my lifetime, okay? And I don't have a name. So that's where God has brought me. Well, um... I guess the entertainment industry is a very, uh, very fickle. It's uh, unfortunately in the United States, in our, in our system, our rigged system, uh, you got to be at the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, you have yeah. to you have to know the right people. Unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, if it was up to me, I would do things fairly, and I would allow the people with the best talent to offer, the people with the greatest minds, even if it's a poor child in a ghetto, if he's got a, a um, if he has a, um, a genius IQ, or he has a talent, he should get that scholarship, he should uh, be given the opportunity. Now in your case, um, you just keep on plugging away like you've been doing, you're getting exposure, but you haven't quite hit the high note like Ralph Cramden you said in that episode, you know, as far as your big break. Uh, but, hey, a lot of people have been in worse situations than you, and they became, they, they became rich and famous. But that's not your priority. People think no. that all entertainers... No are the same and they want to be rich and famous but that is not the priority of can create and they would totally be shocked if they knew how deep your agenda is well because you see what it is and what it's dealing with is okay in the past it would be like okay you're using me with this tool and it's a powerful tool okay 
and I'm serving you, all right, how come I'm not there? When you and say you, you're talking about... irritate me. That always used to irritate me because I got to work a regular job. So now I'm on my regular job and I'm working hard, okay? And it's like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. I want to be doing what I really want to do. You like okay? that? Fun. Yeah. I got it. I got to take it with a grain of salt. So now, studying the word and getting deeply into the word, God is showing me things, okay, that when I go to perform or even go to a dance club, okay, I go in there and do what I got to do for the Lord. People come to me, I talk about him. If they don't, he still takes over. They see his light, okay? And then I give it to the Lord. So when I am done performing or I am done with a dance club, I'm out the door, okay? And that performance or that club for that night that I went into, that's the past. And I move on. Right. And the key thing is I don't know who God is reaching, okay? Using me as a tool. Right. So, so when, even though I'm doing all this stuff. Right. Behind the scenes, God is working. Okay? So now when I'm called in, into the rapture, then he's going to show me my fruit. Well, all the people that I brought to him, okay, yeah. that I never knew about. Because that's the mystery. Well, when you're reaching people. Not my, and, and, and it's not my duty to know that. I go, I do my job. Yeah. I'm done. And I give it to the Lord. Well, you may, you're talking about like when you're out in, in a public area and you're doing your thing and you're performing, or let's say it's a dance floor, uh, I mean, dance club, and people approach you and want to talk to you and tell you what they think of your performance. And then if they ask you, well, how do you make this all happen? And you tell them how, where you get your power from, and now. If they continue to show an interest, that's an example of you witnessing to them and reaching them. Well, you know what, James? I look at it this way. If I go and I do my job, okay, I did my job. Yeah. That's all I can do. I don't know what's going to happen after that, okay? Yeah. And it's not my duty to know. What's going to happen after that? It's out of your hands. I go to a show and say there's 200 people there. Right. And I'm done. And I leave. I don't know who God is reaching, but I did yeah. my job. Well, for those uh, for those out there that don't know this, um, Ken Create also performs in, uh, in, in fundraisers and in churches. Right. Uh, let's say he, he does... Oh, uh, one or two songs performing. I don't mean singing them, but in, in his performance. Uh, it could be creative creative dance. It could be creative mime and creative dance. It could uh, utilize magical lights, props, you know. Anyway, when he's done, and if it happens to be a church or a fundraiser, very often he gets to speak. Now, when he speaks, if he speaks in a church... People have to understand that Ken Create's other hat is the fact that he's an evangelist. So, right. you know, he's a writer, he's an evangelist, and he's a performing artist. And um, for those that don't know, because they might not know what, what, you're me what you mean by, you know, talking about your performances and then talking about spreading the word and reaching people and all that. I just want them to understand where you're coming from. Right. You know, well, you now, are. when I did the fall session, and I met you, and you taped me, okay, and I told my friend this, all right, and you know, and I know, when you were taping me, right, in front of that guy's little stand, didn't the cop shut the music off on me because I stopped traffic? You know what? That's something you noticed that I didn't notice? Really? Yeah, because the cops came up to me. Yeah. 
Stop. And then so we had to shut you down because the people trying to get up the street couldn't get by because there were all these people who were walking or seeing this crowd and they're gathering in the crowd. And, and it's like, like going on there. And it's like a bottleneck on the highway traffic. It's like it, it's like a clogged artery, basically. They're, they're all, uh, there's a crowd and then other people see the crowd and they walk up to the crowd to, to right. see w why there's a crowd and then the crowd gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes. Before you know it, the traffic's not going anywhere. Right. And that's when they, that's when yeah. the people kind of get up the street and the cops turn the music off on me. Well, that's happened. That happens when Ken Create performs. I mean, <laughs> okay. And Stops what happened traffic. too was a lady who I know who hooked me up and she's a believer now. She's really cool. She called me and when I went the next day to perform, she see me. I got to talk to you. I said, what's that? She goes, your performance is great. I love what you do. But you got to be kind of careful. She goes, you go in certain situations where there's stands and everything. Nobody's dying. Everybody's watching you. And the merchant people are complaining. I was like, whoa. That people are not people are not browsing and circulating amongst the uh, concessions and the stands, and and they're they're losing money because everybody's watching you all night. Well, because what it is is if I'm using certain props, if I'm using the dancing cane, yeah. I'm hip hopping with that cane, if I'm doing Michael Jackson with that cane, right. if I'm boogieing with that cane, people look at that and say that's different. Now you caught their eye, they're watching. So if you can keep them where they're at and they don't move, then you got something oh, that yeah. other performers don't have because you're talking about this is on a street and this was at a festival. So people watch, they watch, and then they move because it's a big festival. Time to move on. But if you can keep them and stop them in their tracks for 10, 15 minutes without them moving on. That's powerful stuff. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. It could happen anywhere. It could be in, in a dance club. It could be at a park. It could be at a carnival. Like when, when, when Ken Create said, I met him at the Falls Festival, I met him at uh, a few years ago, um, I believe it was, Maybe uh, so. Maybe yeah. a little longer than that. I met him at a Labor Day weekend festival in Patterson, New Jersey, in historic Patterson. That's what he meant by the Falls Festival because it was near uh, America's newest national park, which is the Great Falls in Patterson. So, uh, you know, we, we often do, uh, we rehearse and practice, and sometimes we do open mics at the historic Patterson Museum, which is run by uh, Mr. Giacomo uh, Di Stefano, a shout out to Giacomo and, and the museum. But definitely when you visit historic Patterson and uh, the National Park, the Great Falls, definitely stop by the uh, Patterson Museum because it represents uh, the, the Industrial Revolution. It, it, it is, um, History. It is American history. Okay, so definitely stop by there. And uh, anyway, uh, now getting to the point where you have a new song that right. that you really like, or somebody gives it to you and you really like it. When you listen to the song in private, explain to people how you in a creative way, break down the song and try to match it with the right performance in terms well, of... like I said, well, like I said, number one, it's got to, to me, there's something there. Okay. So if I see there is something there, then I listen to the music, I put my head home on. I totally break it down where I know the song inside and out. I know every beat, I know every change, everything that deals with the music. 
and I have to be on every single change and every single beat. So when people watch me perform, it's like I'm going perfect to the song. So when people look at that, that he went perfect to that song, that guy did his homework. But now when you look at my name, can't create, they're like, oh, that can't create. You see what I mean? Because you're creating. But Jane, that comes all from the Lord, okay? Like, you may do the false festival, I do events, I do all different kind of things, even get shows and stuff. When I go to perform, I don't perform to say, look at me, okay? When I perform, I release myself and I let the Holy Spirit power take over. Yeah, but, but when you... I am done, right. okay? These people are going to know, okay, God is real. And to me, well, that's what it's about. Yeah, well, you also physically decide on any changes that you make within the song. Like, you know, like sometimes you'll, oh, yeah. you'll well, switch you'll, you'll switch props, you, or, you know. It could, be, it could be change up. Even the things I do with my friend uh, Paul Morgan. Okay, we just concentrated here. Okay, we did the one up in Blue, and they played the homeless man, so I had the whole skit out. So I did the skit, and my friend Paul goes, oh, that was really good. I says, okay, good. So now we ran through four or five songs. So we got done, and he said, well, we got about 10 minutes to kill, and then we got another half hour to do. All right. So when we come back, what songs do you want to do again? So I says, what well, about the couple ones that are on the edge of side? He goes, okay, we can do that. So we did that, which is great. And he goes, I got two left. He goes, what do you want to do? I says, well, I like Colors of a Man. Okay. So he goes, all right, I'll finish with that one. He goes, you want to do a homeless man again? I says, yeah, okay. So now we did the homeless man again 45 minutes later, bro. And when I was done, he looked at me and he goes, I can't believe it. I said, what? He goes, you totally changed your moves than the first time you did it 45 minutes ago. So it was totally different than the first time I did it, at Boone, which was 45 minutes prior. Right. And well, totally changed. Well, for these for the people out there that are not familiar with the homeless man, um, um, and when can create uh, when he does uh, lip syncing and acts out the song "Shout" from the nineteen eighties, it's all on YouTube. If you go to uh, on the internet and you Google Ken creates playlists, and you go to YouTube, he has a playlist with everything that he's ever done just about and uh it's there i think the the one where the the one that's on video for for the homeless man that uh is definitely there is when you did the show in in dover at a park right okay but he's done the homeless man you know many times and also shout up in uh on the time warner show keeping country strong uh that it's up in Port Jervis, it, you know, he does sh an excellent performance of Shout, but he's done it many times. So he is able to yeah, act out the song. Right. But now, if you look at the Shout, for example, okay, and say people were going to do that, okay, so lip sync the song out, maybe they'll act the song out, okay, and people say, oh, that's good. I bring it to another level where if I know the word inside and out, I put props in the song. So I got fake money. I got a mask. I got the lights. Okay, these are things that are added in the song. Okay, now when it comes to these points, when it comes to the money, I, I pull out fake money and throw it around. So people get that there. When it comes into black and white, which is probably the only racism, Okay, for black people, white people. I got a black glove on. I got a white glove on. I look towards my hands. That represents that. 
the end of the song, I got a skeleton mask. Okay, so when I turn around, I got this mask on that nobody knows about because it's hidden under my hat. So I got all these little props in there that bump that song up to another level with people say, Yeah. I never seen anything like that yeah. before. Well, like, well, the part I where... I totally picked this yeah. song apart. Well, the part where you, where you say you shouldn't have to sell your soul, you could, ha you could hold up a, a Satan mask. No, no. That's where the money comes out. You shouldn't have to sell your soul. Then you, the, the, the wad of fake money, yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Because that's what people do. They sell their soul for fame, fortune, money. Well, yeah, yeah so the, entertain, the, the entertainment industry people are, um, they're kind of, I don't know if you want to say blackmailed, forced into right. pretty much selling you their soul, and, you know, they become like whores, you know, uh, for the industry. Yeah. Now, when I do the homeless man, I'm dressed like a homeless guy, and then I got good clothes underneath. They're the props. Now, that's a heavy I duty. That's a heavy-duty performance. For those of you who are not familiar with Ken Create's role as the homeless man performance, you got to catch that. You got to find that on, on the internet and see it. You know. Yeah, but you see the one that you've seen out in Dover. Okay, that was for a church. So I was just in my regular clothes. So you don't see the dirty clothes. Right when really you right. If well, you, we really don't right now have that song where you see me homeless with the clothes and then I change. In other words, when, when, when you do the theatrical version of The Homeless Man, right? You, it's a different, yeah, you're dressed the part. And, um, right. In fact, I'm hanging outside the theater of where we're performing and people actually think I'm homeless. Okay, so now when it comes to the homeless man song, I walk in and I walk on the stage <laughs> and I sit there and people are like, hey, ain't that the homeless guy that was outside? Yeah, yeah what stage. does he do? They have no clue. And they have no idea, they had no idea prior that that this bum, this vagabond what? was is part of the performance. Yes. You totally blow them away. Like all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're part of the performance, and they thought that you were like like they normally treat homeless people, like they're they're less than human, like well, like they're I, garbage. I put, I, I put sunglasses on, and I look at all the people sitting there, and I just stare at them, and the song begins. But as the song goes on, I hope get up from where I'm sitting on the stage and then I go into the skit, three quarters into the skit, the guy gets his life together and he gets a job. So all the homeless clothes are ripped off and there's new clothes underneath that I'm alive now. And then the lights come in and it just floors people because when I was done, she came up to me and goes, I never seen anything like that in my life. Where are you from? So I told him, I'm from Patterson. He goes, I preach in Patterson. Really? Give me your number. Took my number. We talked. He said, Can you come down and perform where I preach? Oh, so a, pas a, a pastor saw you perform in the yes. homes, man. Okay, so wow. I went down there. Okay. I did three songs. I got to talk to the people. And he said to me, Ken, create. I said, yeah, because you're heavy duty. He said, you come across being too strong. He goes, I'm going to be a fifth. Because when you're done, people don't know how to approach you because you come across too strong. He says, you got to start talking to them about them. So I said, well, okay. So I'm standing on line to get food. There's people in front of me and there's people in back of me. So one guy was in back of me like this. Hey, that food smells really good. He goes, yeah, you're right. I said, I heard the food's good. He goes, yeah. And he looked at me and he's like, bro, your performance is great. Okay, so the ice was broken. Yeah. Yeah, you know if, I mean? you're, if, you're, if you're a super talent, 
it could be any, I mean, it could be you, it could be a violinist, Ben Zabel, who you work with, anybody that, that blows away the audience with talent, great talent, people are intimidated by them and they're not approachable performers. They, you know, they just be... Yeah, but you see, Paul's approachable, Benny's approachable, because you see, they got talent. And there are talented people out there. I'm doing a variety show that's going to another level because I have a different purpose. And that's why I come across too strong where you guys are more approachable than me because my agenda is different than that I see things differently, okay, than other people and other performers. Well, you, you know, I yeah. performed with people, okay, we went in and performed, all right, they're going in, performing, getting paid, okay, talk to some people, they're out the door, okay, that's not my agenda. I'm there to reach people for Christ. So it's a right. different ballpark. Yeah, the average entertainer, entertainer is there to do a job, get paid, and leave. Yeah, and you can be good, and you can have talent. Mm -hmm. Okay, but well, you're not going to the level where I want to go because my agenda is different. I'm not there to perform and get paid and hang out and talk to people. I'm there to shine God's light, mm -hmm. to bring people to Christ. Okay, that's where God brings you to the next level. Okay, because people have seen me perform pastors, bishops, and they said to me, you're gifted. And I said, well, you know what? Every believer has the gifts inside them. Okay? What are you doing it for? What are you doing it for? So if you're doing it to reach people and you're witnessing to people for what you're doing, mm -hmm. well, it's about that kind of becomes a gift. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're serving the Lord. And he looks at your heart Okay, and he sees me when I go to perform or go to a club, and he's like, yeah, he's here for me. He's going to talk about me. Okay, so my spirit is going to run through him and blow these people away. Now, you can be a believer, a performing artist, and you're there for a different purpose. Get paid, talk to people, hang out, and leave. You can't go into my ballpark, okay, if you're not doing it for Christ and witnessing for Christ, you're not in that ballpark. And every believer who performs should be in that ballpark. Well, you see, um, entertainment done for the secular um, society, uh, popular music and what have you, it could be jazz, it could be you know anything for the secular uh, mainstream society, as soon as you mention anything about religion or Christianity, you, you'll you get typecasts and they'll stick you in the uh, in the Christian music section. You, so you got to word things differently, you know, or you got to uh, keep that side of you yeah, and okay. on the back burner, you know what I mean? I can go into a club or I can do a performance and God blows these people away and I don't have to say one word. Okay. 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 They just seem to speak it. Now I Okay. Now you um do you have a, a another story? You wanna do another story like we did last time? You have another yeah, story. Huh? Let me see. Let me see. I'll, I'll try to grab one out of my notebook. Just give me a minute. Yeah, yeah. We got time. Just, uh, if you got, because I figured yeah, we... Yeah, I got another good 15 minutes. Yeah, because we, uh, we, it, it went over so well the first time I had you on the, uh, uh, I'm on the progressive podcast that right. I figured, you know, what the hell, you know, if you, let me, let me get my... Apparatus, um, not to change the subject, but remember 
when you uh, when you did your um, you sang your uh, like uh, country bluegrass gospel song, and I was playing the Jews harp. Yeah. You remember that? You still got that song? Yeah. I don't know. I got to hunt for it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, down the I road. I a lot of stuff in notebooks and yeah. You know what I mean? Well, stuff I got scattered around. But I know where it, it all is. Yeah. Well, uh, I just want to show, you know, in case people are wondering where the sound they're going to hear is coming from, I just grabbed my. African djembe drum made of mahogany and goat skin, so I got it with me. So if you're wondering, you know, uh, where the hell the sound's coming from, you, you know. All right. Let me know when you got it. All right, I got two here. Now, I have one notebook that was totally full, 110 stories. Uh huh. Okay, that's first when I became a believer. Right. Okay. So I had to be groomed and taught, okay, that a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. that I wrote back in the early 80s, okay, was like naive stuff. Right. Okay. So I was taught. I was rooted in the word, grew in the word, studied the word, okay. So now when I write and an idea comes from me, I know it's a solid message. Well, before early 80s, because I was a new Christian, mm -hmm. it wasn't solid. Right. But I could take stuff from there. Mm -hmm. Okay? And learn from even back then and put a story together. If right. I kind of like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Alright, I'll do this quickie right here. Alright, All right. hold on. Hold on a minute. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you how I wrote this. I did a show with my friend. We were done. We went downstairs. We were a whole bar atmosphere. I was bored. I had a soda. Okay. An idea came to me. I grabbed the pen. I grabbed the napkin. And because there was nothing around. Right. And I wrote this story. It took me, uh, I think, two minutes to write this. And when it was done, I showed the lady. I was friends with my buddy, okay, and she was totally blown away. She goes, you just wrote that? I said, yeah, it took me two minutes to write this. She goes, you got to be kidding me. How about that? I'm like, huh. All right, this is called He Watches Over Me. Okay. He see me grow from an infant to a boy to a young man. He see me play the playground. Definitely powerful. All right, let me give you one more. Yeah, but speak up, uh, speak a little higher volume this time. Uh, All right, let me know when you're going to do this. All right. Okay, this one could be a rapping. This could be a rapping one. Rap. Okay. Okay, we call it like with a gospel choir in the background. Okay. In the background. When he comes into that part. Okay, ready? Everybody gather around. Be his mercy to his throne. Everybody gather around. Be his mercy to his throne. It's time to pray. Wake up. It's a new day. It's time to 
learn. Read his word now. You'll be teach right. Find what you have. Don't look down. I feel great. Don't go out now and reach the unknown. Everybody gather around. See the Do his problem. Be the way. Clap your hands down. Shout out loud. Turn on his light. Now, go make things bright. Joy is your soul. Do a dance now. Go make it bright. Turn on his light. So go out now and fight the good fight. Then it goes into everybody gather around. See his mercy to his throne. Everybody gather around. See his mercy to his throne. Now, the second part will be everybody. You gotta when sing it louder. You, you gotta put more power into the, into the, the volume. I just gave it to you, and then I gave it to you in a rap singing way. I understand. But if I would get the right people to do it, there's something there. It's like what 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 you did with that um, that gospel song that uh, you you did it in a, in a country. Bluegrass style, I remember, right. and I was right. I was playing the juice harp. Right. Okay. So to get the right people to do it, and then you got keyboards, and you got horns, and drums, and clapping. Okay, choir. There's something there. Oh yeah, okay. when you put the whole thing together like that. All right, but the problem is, these people I have met in my lifetime. A lot of false promises out there, man. A lot of false promises. Well, you know, people in general, they don't do what they say, and they don't, uh, they don't like, they don't say what they do. They, you know, they're they're, they're full of shit. <laughs> well, you know, changed. I'm talking about believers. Oh, oh, yeah, no, believers. no, yeah, yeah, even, yeah. even amongst uh, people of a certain religion, uh, it doesn't matter, even people in church, but, I mean, look how many people yeah. go through the motions every Sunday, they go all dressed up with a suit and tie, they go to church, and they, they and, but there's no fellowship, they don't know anyone, they don't want to know anyone. Right. You know, I mean, it's well, a lot of hypocrites. They come across when they perform. They come across like, hey, wow, that's great, man. Wow, here's my number. I want your card. And then when I call them, they don't even return a call. <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what's amazing? And they probably look you right in the eye, too, and smile. Yeah, well, a lot of them put on a show, probably, in front of all people. Oh, isn't, it, blow you off. isn't that like... Um, you're in a public area and you see these, uh, all of a sudden one or two girls sees her friends and, and they have to put on a big show and scream and run over and hug them and talk loud to show everyone that it's like, it's like 
they got a lot. They got a lot of friends. They know a lot of people, and they're. I, I don't know what their motive is, but they're, they're showing off. Is what I'm trying to say. They of they're course. doing it for attention. Of course, you know. So now I don't want other people. Okay, really cool. And hook me up. Okay. So you know you got ones who are real. And then you got the ones that hey believers. They're living in the flesh. They just got to grow up. Well. Okay. But that's not my problem. I, I got to do what I got to do. Listen. Okay. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Your own. There you go. Get your house in order. Now you hit the nail yeah. on it. You hit the nail right on the head. You got to worry okay. about your own salvation. But, you know, there's a lot of hypocrites out there, too. That, hey, there's a lot of people that don't even open up the book. They don't even know what's in the Bible. Like so a lot of these politicians. Well, I, I totally I totally agree with you. But you know what? That's not my problem. Yeah. You got to worry about what I'm doing. I mean, how could how could a person, like let's take the some of the latest news I heard. Joel Osteen makes six hundred thousand dollars a week in right. donation. Now that is in a mind-boggling, astronomical amount of donations when you think right. about it. And of course, he lives in a mansion. He, he lives pretty high on a right. hog. But right. but what is he doing with? The donations, if he happens to be a pastor, and he, or I don't know. An I, I don't know, and I'm not judging a man because I don't know his heart. And between God oh, and I him. oh, I can see his heart. You, if you look, it's it's obvious. If you're an evangelist or a pastor or a minister, and you got that kind of money coming at you in donations, you should be doing things that are that are uh, a Christian, that are, you know, like giving to the poor, feeding the homeless. So, you know, if yeah. you don't... If well, you, when it comes to individuals like that, I don't know what he's doing. You don't broadcast it. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing either, Kenny. I don't right. know. Don showed me something, okay? Because I used to judge people, but he showed me something in this book that I got. And it was called Power from the... Was different entertainers, sports people who became believers. Okay, now there was one guy who was going for a contract in baseball. All right, but there was another guy who got his big contract. All right, and he was an orphan. Right, so his family took him in, and the son played sports. So he grew up with the family who played sports, and he turned out to be a really talented player. And his stepbrother. Turned out to be a good pitcher who pitched for a couple teams. Okay. Mm -hmm. When he got his contract, and at the time it was a huge contract, okay, he built two orphanage houses. Okay. In fact, him and his wife took in like 10 kids, like adopted them, and then they got their family and stuff. All right. So he got two buildings he built. And he's a believer. All right. So now, if I didn't read that story and I seen his contract, would I look at him and say, "Get this crazy guy"? You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Right. So you don't know, okay? I would have never known if I didn't buy this book. So the other guy, I understand, who's a believer, that he was going for the type of contract that this other man got. All right, to do God's work. Now, that's cool. Now, David Robinson, who played basketball, okay, he got a huge contract on his basketball team. All right, he built two grammar schools and took people that were poor, the kids, brought them in, they're learned, they're taught, yeah. there's teachers, they have showers, they're taught the word of God, they had all brand new clothes. Cafeteria, food, the whole nine yards. This is what he did. Right. They don't. So in other words, if I didn't read that, would I look at that man 
is being. Look at this guy's contract. Look how greedy he is. So you see what I'm trying to say? So when it comes to the Joel Holstein or somebody like him, okay, I don't know what he's doing. So in other words, what you're saying is it, if somebody is in the spotlight and they're famous, you don't know what they're keeping hidden from the I public. Know you don't know what they're doing because they might not they might not make it available to the for public news. People might not know about okay. it. They might be doing it behind the scenes is what you're trying to say. Right. But, right. But, but like getting back to what we were talking about, it's not my job to know. Okay. I got to do what I got to do. Right. And they're doing what they're doing. Okay. So now if they are false, they're in deep water, bro. But if they are <laughs> and they come in their way, and they're spreading the word, then who am I to judge? Yeah, well, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is when a TV evangelist, uh, forget right. about Joel Osteen, any TV evangelist that, let's right. say, ends up with a mega church, right? that donated money is supposed to, of course, maintain the church, the building, the, and the ministry. You right. know, you got electric bills, you got water, you got solar, and so forth. Right. All right, now, any extra money aside from maintaining the church or the ministry, you know, if you got that kind of money coming in, hey, that's a lot of food for the food pantries and the soup kitchens. Oh, I, I totally agree. You know what I mean? And, and I respect that guy for giving back to the community. Like, let's say, let's say a famous basketball player... Uh, becomes, let's say he becomes a Christian, you know, and he wants to do something for his old neighborhood. Like maybe he wants to build a boys club, boys and girls right, club. Right. You know, I think that's fantastic. I agree with you. Giving back to the to the poor neighborhood you, that you grew, you grew up in, you know, I mean. Uh, I agree with you. But you got to realize, the TV evangelists that are on TV, okay, or even have big churches, they're making money. Okay, what are they doing with it? So they're going to make money. That's a gimmick. Okay, yeah. what are they doing with it? You know what, James? That's not my job to know, man. I don't worry about that. You just do what you know what they're doing. You just do what you do best and uh, what you need to do for yourself and. Uh, uh, when you leave the final line is as a believer you have to grow you have to be in the word okay you have to pray you have to edify and build up the body of Christ and you have to be a witness for Christ if you're doing that then you're running your race right okay <clears throat> that's my job that's what I want to do right that's it. now well that that's all right you know well, that, that's more for another show, you know, getting into the uh, Christian aspect of it, the religious yeah. aspect. Create As far as creativity goes, a few people that are not familiar with Can Create is he literally dissects a song and he tailors his performance to the song, to the beats, to uh, different highs and lows in the song. Um... And it's just amazing how he does it. Of course, he spends time listening to the song many times until he knows the song like the back of his hand, you know. And then he just uh, uh, okay. and that's basically it. Uh, um, you now you've added props since you first started using props. Right. Of course, you, right? You were introduced to new things that you mastered. People. People are right. una unaware that it took time for you to master the uh, the dancing cane uh, to the point where you could do two of them. But I mean, yeah, well, I'm working on two right now. But you know what impressed me, honestly, what impressed me, of course, the two canes was a tremendous ability. But what impressed me is how you did one dancing cane at a high speed, and in the other hand, you had a, a, a delight or a, fi a firefly. Right. You had another, you did it at uh, Jimmy D's working with uh, 
Cooper's Dignity uh, over at that right. biker bar, Jimmy D's in, I guess it was North Bergen, New Jersey. And you were doing that, and you were, that's the first time I see you do that, where you were working a light with one hand, okay, and you had the dancing cane in the other hand. Right. All right. Being able to work the two of them, two different props in each hand, to me that was amazing. And yeah, well, James, we're going to have to cut this baby, uh, finish up there. Okay. Because i got a big day tomorrow. Okay. Well, uh, any, uh, any last word you have about creativity? Nah, we summed it up. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us. And, uh, I'll see you again. Okay. Have a good All night. Right. Bye. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.